so that's what we give and you can use any old thing it doesn't matter the newer devices do take better pictures I have to say but we can often diagnose from even an iPhone 4 which is qu getting quite old now uh, I'd rather you had an iPhone 6 um, so I would recommend that you read this document about the ethical and legal as aspects of photography in clinical medicine and you can download that clinical images and use of personal mobile devices um, patient consent privacy confidentiality security backup removing the images off your phone and quality and so that's from that document makes you think about things uh, we have this program Wabalogic it's, it's now called MIM but um, and that's not properly working yet it's taking a long time to happen but it is happening so consent so consent is quick and easy but you have to get it and most patients are more than happy if you explain it to them so you're referring them for clinical purposes for help with a diagnosis or management of a patient you can't so the referral says on it I'm sure you're used to this by ref making this referral, I confirm uh, I've got the consent of the patient to do that. And if the, f if the fact you've taken a f picture, you've got consent, obviously nobody's going to take, let you take a picture without giving consent, unless they're incapable of giving consent, and that's another matter. Um, so the second problem is, well, what, if, what, what happens when those pictures come to someone else? What are they going to do with them? They m may want to do something with the pictures that... I haven't consented for. So in our referrals electronically, we have a box for every single referral now that asks you to tell us if you obtain consent from the patient for their pictures to be used for. Uh, I think the wording is now education, publication, audit, research and product development. Do you know what product development means? We're talking about artificial intelligence. Okay? So we need your pictures. We need good pictures. We need bad pictures, actually, because the computer needs bad pictures to learn how to diagnose <coughs> them, too. But we're actively involved with artificial intelligence research. We want to help the world get better at diagnosing skin cancers. We need millions and millions of pictures to do that effectively. So that's what product development means. I run a website called DermNet. You may have heard of it. <laughs> One of its reasons for being successful is the number of images. We have more than 20,000 images. I can't tell you the number because many of them are duplicated. Uh, it's actually 45,000, but um, a lot of those are duplicates. Uh, so. Uh, we need more because I've never got exactly the picture I want. We don't publish anything on DermNet unless it's consented. Or it's very old, before these rules were invented. Or nobody on this earth would know, know where it came from. So we've gone through, I've been through four different lawyers and they all agree, that's okay, it's best to have written consent. If you haven't got written consent, verbal consent. If you haven't got verbal consent, well, if they couldn't tell who, that it was theirs, that's okay too because it's not personal health information and the legislation's about personal health information. And if it doesn't say Mrs. Jones on it, it's not personal health information. So we have to define that. So if it's a face, that's Mrs. Jones. She knows. And so does her neighbour. So we're not going to use a face without consent and express consent usually we actually have to get them to write and and with our electronic thing it even has a box for doing it so um, the I have an arrangement with the lawyers at the hospital <laughs> I've had for 25 years um, if it's a tattoo I need express consent can I take a picture of your tattoo now that melanoma you've got growing in the middle of your tattoo that's been delayed diagnosis for such a long time because you covered it up because you did thought it looked ugly um, that, I want a picture of that, but it's got your tattoo in it. Is that okay? Sure, fine. Sign here. Dermnet. Uh, uh, individual birthmarks and things like that. And then there's an issue about children. The children didn't necessarily give consent. It was their parents. 
So is that good enough? So there's a little bit of a debate about that. Um, and backing up. Okay, so this is our old consent form. The new one is still under development, but it'll look pretty similar to that, a little bit simpler. Uh, so we have clinical record, education and publication, which, is, which includes a website. Uh, and special purposes. So for specific, we write Dermnet or stamp it. So uh, if you were referring in general practice, uh, you were saying you're referring it for a dermatologist to give a view, that's all it's going to be used for. Or you may say, well, they ask here whether you can also use the, Im they can use the images for other purposes. I'll read out what it says. Are you happy with that? Most patients say yes. There's very few that say no. Our commonest response is N slash A, not applicable, which we thought meant that they hadn't attached any images, but it usually means they forgot to ask. And so for some of those, I'm going to go back to the doctor and say, this is a really good example. I wonder if you could ask the patient if we can use it. And nearly always that comes back. Yes. Um, so you need to keep them for the clinical. If you've taken a photograph, you must keep it. It's part of the record. You can, just like you can't cross out what you wrote in paper notes and you can't delete what you saved on the electronic record, it's in the audit. All you can type is another letter saying, seeing I meant hyperthyroidism, not hypothyroidism, as another entry. If you've taken a photograph, that's the clinical record. You can't delete it. You can delete it at the time. You can say, oh gosh, that's out of focus. Or Mrs. Jones, I'm awfully sorry you didn't give consent to that. Now you're telling me you don't want any pictures, I'll delete it. Fine. But if she's gone out the room and you've saved it, that's the end of it. You have made the clinical record. It can't be deleted, not legally. And you need to lock your screen and password control it and use encrypted backups and use a New Zealand approved server. Uh, you need to get pictures off your cell phones. Did, but you know when you delete it off an iPhone, it stays there for 30 days? So you can rescue it, because sometimes you need to rescue it. It goes in a folder called deleted photos, and then it deletes properly in about a month's time. Okay, so how can you do it safely? So if you've got no other way, you can use PicSafe. You can use a free PicSafe or you can use a paid for PicSafe. Obviously, you get more from the paid one. The free one, I think, reduces the file size and does some other things. Um, and you, you can take a photo, series of photos. You can get patient consent. They can sign on your device. It goes up to an approved cloud server, approved in New Zealand. You can download it. Um, there's various ways they store it. There's this device called MedImage. Now this is quicker and easier. You can't give consent on it. This is dead simple once you've set it up. It's dead simple to set up, but it takes about an hour to read the instructions. And then you go, ah, yeah, it is easy. <laughs> but the hour of reading the instructions wasn't. Um, and all I have to do is to open the software, take the photograph, press the button, and off it goes and lands in my laptop or my hospital computer. And it lands in a folder, which I've told it the NHI, so it puts it in a folder with that NHI. And there's a med, um, med tech one that lands in the patient's folder. So if you pay med image a fee, they will set it up for your practice that it lands in the patient's notes. Okay, so we're going to take some photos now. Uh, we're going, this is a professional photographer. We have this blue screen in every single consulting room. It's very handy to have that, but if you haven't got a blue screen, you do, you know, you can find a green cloth or a door or something that's plain. Um, pre preferably not shiny, so you don't want something that's a shiny color. But a plain background. Blue's really good. Green's really good. White's a bit too white. Black's a bit too black. Um, purple worked quite well. I had that in my private rooms for a while. Uh, we've got light green there now. Um, so lots of light and use flash anyway. The more light, you still need flash, but the flash won't cause so much flash burn if there's good light in the background. 
um, and a lens parallel. So quite a lot of the photos we receive are out of focus because there's the patient and there's the camera. Or maybe the patient's tipped or tipped and here's the camera. Well, it's going to be out of focus. Bring the patient's body to the meet the camera or move the camera to meet the patient. It's not that hard. We get patients taking pictures of their legs, you know, really not very good photos. It would be so much better if they got them. So I had a patient not long ago who sent, had a nice rash. She was a, a Dermnet contact, actually. I said, oh, your pictures are really lovely. We'd love to use them on Dermnet. Could we have some in focus, please? And so I gave her a little lesson over the internet. She was based in God only knows where, somewhere in the States, I think, um, about how it would be really helpful if she got someone else to take the photograph of her legs so that, it, that the lens was parallel. Well, she didn't, but she set it up with, um, with a tripod and a, um, a timer. So she took the pictures of her legs, and they were perfect. Um, and she using a timer is quite handy. Um, so here's, you know, here's our tattoo. That one did give consent, by the way. You can see how tricky it is diagnosing skin lesions in tattoos, especially when they're melanomas, which that one isn't. Um, so lighting, this is underexposed. There's not enough light there, so I have no idea what that spot is. I don't want window lighting either. Um, shadowing. How am I supposed to diagnose from those pictures? Um, so if you've got an iPhone, a lot of people perhaps aren't aware of this. You tap and a little square comes up and you know that that's the place that's in focus. And beside the square is this little sun. And if you tap on the sun, you can move it up and down to increase or reduce the exposure. So that's quite a handy tip. I expect it's the same on... Um, other phones, but I'm an iPhone freak. Uh, so plain background. So this is just a tablecloth that I've hung across my door as a background. Um, that's, ta that's pictures taken from too close. You need to be 20 centimeters away. And if you want a close-up picture from 20 centimeters, then use your zoom function to achieve that. Um, parallel is so, so what I mean by if you don't have the lens in the right place, you don't get the right picture. So um, you can download this from Dermnet. Uh, it's a photo photography guide. Canfield have given me the permission to provide this widely. Um, but it really is a good thing to have hanging on your wall to remind you the sort of poses people should be in for taking reasonable pictures. So we want pictures of legs. We want pictures from all aspects, sideways and so on. And feet, feet are quite difficult to photograph. You've got to work that one out. How are you going to take pictures of feet? Uh, and there are various ways you can achieve that. So head and neck, series of pictures. Um, so the normal picture, you're going to end up with shadowing under the chin. So that's undesirable. We don't want shadowing there. We want to be able to see the neck. And so we achieve that with a piece of paper. Uh, so that just reflects the light onto the, you can use silver foil, white paper, but something that reflects, so that it reflects onto the shadowed area. Different ways of taking pictures of your arms. Hands, plain background, please, please, plain background. Fingers, nails. So if you're just taking one nail, it's quite hard for a camera to focus on that. It's more likely to focus on the background. But if you take lots, you can link them like that. You can cover them like you can do it that way. You can do it that way. Um, and using something with a hole in it is quite handy. I think I've got a picture of that coming up, maybe not. So legs, just sit them down with something behind, just a cloth. That's obviously no good because the cloth's in the wrong place or the patient's in the wrong place. Feet, black works quite well for feet, but that's one way of doing it. 
close up. So um, we don't need a ruler by a nail because we everybody knows the size of a nail, but you need a ruler if it's on the back. If you're too close, back off and zoom. Keep this camera still. Um, a lot of the way of keeping a camera still is actually use a two or three second delay. So you put your timer on for two seconds because as you press the button to take the picture, you go, uh, and it moves it. So if you do, uh, and then hold it still for two seconds, it's more likely to be a still picture. Tripods are good, but they're too, we haven't got time for tripods. So this is what I was meaning by something with a hole in it. This is just a piece of cardboard. Very hard to take a picture of a curved surface in focus. We're talking noses, ears, lips, fingers. So we have a set of cards with holes of different sizes. You can manufacture that quite easily. Well, one of our nurses actually went to um, the paint store, Le Levine's, is it called? Resines. Uh, and um, they, they have um, cards with holes in of different sizes to help people choose colours. They're quite handy. And a, a light green works very nicely. You don't want black or white you, because that, cause we're not only looking at focus, we're also looking at exposure. So it needs to be a neutral colour. And it helps the camera get the right focus and exposure. Looks a bit clunky. Um, autofocus. So you can lock your focus. Sometimes you find that you've got it in focus for half a second and you're just about to take a picture and it goes out of focus. So you can actually lock the focus by pressing on the iPhone uh, middle of the and keeping it pressed for a little bit and that locks it. And then from there you might have moved a bit but you can move it in and out to get your focus. It works quicker. Um, so these are different types of tripods that you can buy to fit phones on or a timer. Um, anatomic macro, macro with a ruler and dermoscopic views. Uh, locations, so um, we get pictures of moles on back. Please see mole on back. And then we get a picture of all the moles. How am I to know which one is the one of concern? Especially if you actually sent three moles on back. Which one is which? And that's um, really difficult and sometimes very, very important because it may be only one of those three that matters and yet all the pictures have all been muddled up and I don't know which is which. So location, um, we can use anatomymapper.com uh, which is handy because it has these pictures and then you, you uh, hover over here and it tells you the exact location. Documentation. Uh, so... Um, you can use a label, uh, arrows, hmm. Arrow. so sometimes the best arrows are the ones afterwards, so you've taken it with your camera, then you've edited it and added an arrow, that's really clean. Some people use ink and arrow the one and call it number one, arrow number two. We don't particularly like a ring around them. Um, that seems to change our ability to make a diagnosis. So we'd much prefer an arrow pointing. Not too close. Um, so this is a nail, and the, the demoscopy picture can only do half a nail at once. We do need the other half. And we need an end on. So nails we want taken from the top, the left side, the right side, and the end on with macro and demoscopy. So this is how the anatomy maker works. Um, various different dermatoscopes, they all work. Follow the instructions. Usually use gel. So apply gel to the skin before you put the dermatoscope on it. Uh, you could use meths as well. You can use any alcohol spray. Don't use water because your water's uh, got too much surface tension. It drops off, um, but alcohol in some form. Um, these are the way you stick your dermatoscope onto your device. Um, so these are some dermatoscopes, and these are means to attach them. Magnet is the most user-friendly. Uh, there are cheap dermatoscopes. So this is the one I talked about at $100. This is a bit more expensive. Uh, I think that's $99 Canadian dollars. 
but it's unpolarized. The polarized version is hmm, 299 Canadian. I think it's 399 U New Zealand. Very good product. Both of these only work for photographs. They're not handheld for examination. So if you're not a demoscopist, but you're asked to take photos on behalf of your GP, so the GP might be doing the exam, and the nurse might be taking the photographs, these are great because they are always perfect pictures in focus. Whereas the handheld one, you have to attach it, and then there's reasons why it might go out of focus. And they come with apps. So each device comes with a, an app, um, and uh, they're great, the apps, but they're time-consuming to, to fill out. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. This is a Moleskope 2. Uh, the app is unbelievably amazing, especially when you get convert it to the desktop. It's got all sorts of smarts. So it, you've got your overview, and you've got your demoscopy picture. And you can annotate, you can refer it to me and say, I'm worried by this spot, so you send it with a drawing on it. Or I might send it back and say, I'm worried about this spot, or can you take a biopsy from here, or something like that. Very clever smarts. So the smarts are so clever that they can tell you whether the picture you took six months ago was the same picture or a different one. And this one here is a new spot. It's come out highlighted by the software because it wasn't there before. And it can look at your picture and compare it with its database and say, well, your picture looks awfully like these pictures. And these pictures were diagnosed as melanomas or some other thing. Um, PhotoFinder gives the score according to artificial intelligence. Now, don't believe these scores. This is experimental, a new world, very exciting, but they're not quite there yet. They're there to help you. Humans still win, definitely. Visual Di DX is an artificial intelligence system um, which can manage inflammatory skin diseases as well. So, what we think the future is, lesion of concern, throw the AI in, see what that thinks, Maybe benign, in which case we don't need to worry. Maybe malignant, in which case we need to fix that. And then there's these equivocal ones. And in our opinion, that's when you need a human to make the decisions. And if it's not you, then it's someone else like me.